The Explore the Tropics event is in full swing now at Whole Foods Market. It's a celebration of tropical fruits throughout the store, starting with great deals on fresh, juicy, seasonal produce. There's a new melty tropical heat pizza only at Whole Foods Market through March. And that famous mango yuzu chantilly cake is finally back in the bakery department. You'll also find tempting tropical marinated proteins in their meat and seafood departments. Explore the tropics today at Whole Foods Market. There's a new crop of restaurants that are challenging the boring old red sauce and meatballs cliche of Italian food here in Portland. It's seasonal, it's fresh, it's fun, it's even kind of weird. On Thursdays, we talk about food here on CityCast Portland, and today we're talking with Brooke Jackson Glidden, editor of Eater Portland, about the explosion in creativity that we've recently seen in the Portland Italian food scene. It's Thursday, March 16th. I'm John Natariani, in for Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. So, Brooke, big picture, what is the best meal that you've ever had at an Italian restaurant in Portland? Okay, so I think that if I'm going to answer this question honestly, Mm -hmm. it has to be a meal I had years ago. So... Um, When I was 14, for my birthday, my mother took me to Genoa, Mm -hmm. uh, which was a restaurant on Belmont, pour one out. And it was my first tasting menu experience. So um, I still remember the meal. Um, I remember the service. Like it started with a sorrel puree and like a little teacup. And I remember my mother and I didn't know how to like drink it. Yeah. So eventually I just asked a server and he was like, just knock it back, darling. And I just think about that all the time. Welcome that, to fine dining. I know. If that server is out there, contact me because such an important experience for me. But like, oh my God, I remember they had, there was like a a ricotta salad with like asparagus and snap peas and like morel risotto. Like just like... So springy, so fun, and and just so different from any Italian food I'd had before. Oh, my gosh. And what was your 14-year-old brain thinking? Like, how were you processing this meal? I was was completely infatuated. Like, I think that this specific experience um, really showed me this side of Italian food and cooking that I think Italians often emphasize that I think Mm -hmm. is sometimes missed, which is this idea that Italian cooking in Italy often is very, very informed by seasonality, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Mm -hmm. that that was very new as a concept for me. Yeah. And super into vegetables as opposed to the sort of like red sauce and meat Italian-American food. I mean, in the big... I love. Which is delicious. I mean, mean, I'm a Natariani. You don't got to tell me twice. Yeah. (laughs) Fair point. Yeah. (laughs) But, But like big picture, how has Italian food changed in Portland in the last, I don't know, five or 10 years? Wow. So I think that like, it's interesting because if you think about like 20th century Portland Italian food, that is Mm -hmm. much more informed by like red sauce tradition, right? Mm -hmm. So like the places that are going to do some chicken parms and, and, you know, that kind of Italian American food. Um, But I believe it was 2005, Nostrana opens. And there is a, a big shift in the way we talk about Italian food in Portland, very much more focused on, again, like this focus on vegetable centric cooking, seasonality, Mm -hmm. um, and this sort of serious, thoughtful, honest approach to Italian cooking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that makes me think of when Ava Jeans opened and totally. Joshua McFadden, who is the sh- was the chef there um, and had a cookbook that was all about seasonality. And it seems like right. that was sort of a the rock star modern Italian restaurant. Totally. A hundred percent. And, you know, this this expands the influence of of these of like, I think, in Nostrana in particular, like this impacts pizza. This impacts like a a really wide like Lovelies, you know, I think Mm -hmm. comes to mind. Like, okay, this is a really wide spectrum of of Italian restaurants in in the city. Um, But I would say like within the last five or 10 years, Italian restaurants in Portland have kind of gone back around into being really into goofiness, Italian, like 
happily and and self-identified Italian American restaurants, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like you have like Gabbiano's in Northeast Portland, which is yes. like, yeah, we're going to do a giant chicken parm and we're going to love every minute of it. Um, and I think that like even Goomba, you could argue, it's even though it's not as a typical red sauce place, yeah. it's definitely like we're going to serve fry bread with burrata and we're going to we're going to just really play with what a, a pasta dish can look like. Well, well, I really want to sort of walk through some of the foods on these menus. Which restaurant right now do you think has the most adventurous appetizers? And and what are the top things that you're seeing on that place's menu? Totally. Um, if you're talking about like really eclectic or unique, I'm actually going to just mention the two I just mentioned, Goomba yep. and Gabbiano's, right? So like Goomba, again, like that fry bread and burrata dish I love, but you what is it? Like, what is it that's so special about that dish? Well, it's one of the very few places in town that makes its own burrata, and I think that that's really special. So it's like a really creamy, um, sort of like looser burrata, and it's served with fry bread, which like it's this hot, sort of crispy, fry fresh from the fryer kind of experience. Slathering that is, it's just like it's simple. Mm. But it's it's there's no one else in town doing an approach similar, which mm-hmm. feels really cool to me. Yeah. Um, in terms of like straight up, this is the wildest thing I've seen on an Italian menu. Um, the Gabbiano's mozzarella sticks. Yes. I think a lot I had of a people. This was coming. Yeah, yeah. You can't avoid it. Um, so basically, for those unfamiliar, this is essentially a mozzarella shot glass, right? And in its center is like a shot of marinara. So as you're biting into it, it is essentially like you're you're physically eating a cheesy <laughs> shot glass of marinara sauce. Now, like the sheer number of mozzarella sticks I ate in college, like I'm obsessed with this dish. I think it's so fun and weird. Um, in terms of like really special appetizers, I really, really love the appetizers in Mooka. Um, this is definitely more on like the fancier side of things, but so, so tasty. They make this specific dish I really like that's like a seared scallop over this Parmesan faduta, and it has like a saffron gel mm-hmm. and like shallot relish. And yeah. like, oh my God, it's a beautiful dish. It's just yeah. like, ugh, you know, that. Ugh. listen, I'm done. I'm ready. <laughs> oh <laughs> my know? God. Yeah. Gimme. I, I mean, it's amazing because I think Italian food does have this tendency to really lean on tradition, to be like, yeah. this is how Italian food is done. Right. And all these things that you're saying are like kind of these whimsical changes to the old format. Like, I don't think that I thought that there was more space to innovate in the mozzarella stick mold, but <laughs> yeah, like these places right. are finding it, right? A hundred percent. Yeah, totally. Mm, well, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to hear some more of your picks for the best Italian food here in Portland. The Explore the Tropics event is in full swing now at Whole Foods Market. It's a celebration of tropical fruits throughout the store, starting with great deals on fresh, juicy, seasonal produce. There's a new melty tropical heat pizza only at Whole Foods Market through March. And that famous mango yuzu chantilly cake is finally back in the bakery department. You'll also find tempting tropical marinated proteins in their meat and seafood departments. Explore the tropics today at Whole Foods Market. I think the center of any Italian spot is going to be pasta. Uh, There's a lot of places that are making their own. Uh, In terms of homemade pasta, who do you like and what do you get when you go there? Yeah. So um, the immediate thought, when I think handmade pasta, I think of the straight up handmade pasta Mm. at Pastificio de Oro, which is a newish Italian restaurant in... St. John's. It's in the former Gracie's a pizza space. A lot of times when people say handmade pasta, what they mean is they're making a dough and they're using an extruder. And there's a ton of reasons why you you use an extruder, right? Like it's going to be far more consistent. But the folks at Pestificio, they they are literally using rolling pins and cutting pizza like pasta by hand. And what do you get from a pasta when you actually get it under a rolling pin as opposed to one of these little pasta machines? I think it really helps the texture. Mm. I think that you just get a perfect little bite in that pasta. It it gives it this, I mean, rustic quality, but not even just rustic. Like really, like you get, you 
I think you lose a little bit in that, mm. you know, when it's he- heavily extruded, especially like rolled very thin, which there are reasons to do that, you're, there's a higher tendency to overcook. And these are like, I mean, they serve like two pastas every yeah. day, right? Because yeah. again, it's and a it's lot a of tiny, work. It's a tiny <laughs> place. They have like six yeah. tables, right? Right. Yeah. So super, super small space. They can't, they're not making a ton, but Almost always they have some version of like a really lovely hearty meat sauce. So either a bolognese or they're doing like a ragu of some kind. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm just always delighted. You're you're cracking these smiles even as you just think about it. I can see it it. just shining on your face. (laughs) Me too. We we are taping in the afternoon and you are making me so unbearably hungry right now. (laughs) Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's my goal. Uh, (laughs) What else? Are there any other places where the pasta is the pasta of your dreams? Oh, man. I think that sometimes when I'm just like, I want like a big bowl of like really great pasta that is extruded. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like Montelupo. I think that it's it's consistent. I think that um, there are a number of different approaches there that are really, really nice. They again Montelupo play is, space. where is that again? Oh, right. So that is Kearns. Um, it's interesting because it's it's kind of like an all-day cafe in certain ways, right? Like mm-hmm. they they have a market in the center. The guy's a pasta maker first, right? Yeah. And then open this restaurant. So you have really nice, like a, a wider variety of actual pastas on the menu. Like you're mm-hmm. getting a, a, a much wider range of shapes. Um and you can buy it. You can buy the pastas. So that's really fun. Um, so I think there's always this ideal take your friend from out of town restaurant experience, right? And I'm wondering if you had someone coming to visit you, Brooke, you wanted to show them Portland's Italian food, where would you take them? Because mm-hmm. because and this is like a tricky question, because it could either be the most like classic, perfectly to a T Italian place, or it could be the most Pacific Northwestern inspired riff on Italian food. One place. Where would you take somebody? I hate one place. I hate that as a clarifier. (laughs) Um, Okay. So this is, again, a little iconoclastic of an answer on my part, but I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, I really think that I would do Lovelies. So pizza, right? Pizza 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 and ice cream. And I think that... What I think is special about it is there's it is so quintessentially Portland. It's and, like, and and on the off chance somebody has missed all of the times we've already talked about lovely talked about 50, lovely 50, 50 on Let this me show. Give me, the spiel. Yeah. give me a, a quick intro. Totally. So this is a beautiful pizzeria on mm. um North Mississippi. To me, it's like a perfect like family restaurant that feels like a special night out, but like not it's definitely not like pizza parlor energy, but but casual and warm. Sarah Minnick is the uh, owner and pizza chef. What's really interesting about her approach is that everything, 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 again, is sort of like very informed by like Oregon, right? So the yeah. grain blend that they use are all sort of like heritage grains that are grown in Eugene or Junction City. They're fresh flowers that they're using um, in a sourdough. Um, and, you know, the the pizzas themselves are topped with toppings that change like weekly. You know what yeah. I mean? These are these are like really, really, really specific things. And they're coming from all over. What is your I, I'm sure you have a sensory memory of this. Like what is the most memorable Lovely's pizza you've ever had? Uh, OK, so um, she has a pizza that is straight up like potatoes a million ways it's it's like i've had this pizza yeah. i love this pizza it's incredible I think it's, it's it doesn't a... sound like it would work but no i'll, I'll let you yeah no sorry, i'll hold like, back on my enthusiasm so and let you be the guest <laughs> yeah no it's it's what's cool about it it's like so it, first off i think when we think potatoes we also kind of think the way we think about like bananas where it's like well there's a potato you know what i mean like maybe we're we're talking like russets you know some yukon golds red blisses you know but the potatoes that she's choosing they're really specifically like creamy or, mm-hmm. you know, so you're getting this, these different textures out of potato that you might not normally experience. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, you're getting this potato base, you're getting like almost like a confit potato experience and you're getting these like crispy little potato bits. And all of this is on this pizza with like a very, I want to say it's like telegi or something similar. It's like a, a very creamy cheese. That's going to work yeah. really well with the creaminess of the potato. And it's, it's drizzled with, it's it 
some herby green sauce, right? So it's sort of like every it's it's a Fifty Shades of Potato, and it it's so simple, but like so beautifully executed. I mean, every element of every pie is amazing. You just yeah. have this like really flavorful crust and you have really amazing toppings. And yeah. then you finish with my favorite ice cream, if it's the season for it, the peach leaf, which it, it's almost like almondy. It's yeah. it's so good. Yeah, yeah. And I think the thing that's so cool about a Lovely's pizza is that, you know, if you're used to like an American red sauce pizza, you're going to be like, I don't even recognize this right. as pizza potentially, but it's so much yeah. closer to the authentically seasonal way that like mm -hmm. real Italian food might work yeah. in a real Italian restaurant. A hundred percent. Yeah. Oh. Um, but I was talking to someone who grew up right on the border of, of Italy and they always talk about Lovely's feeling like the most Italian in certain ways because yeah. of that focus mm -hmm. on like, this is what's, this is what we got. Like, this is what's coming out of the garden. So this is what we're serving. That feels like a really sort of a, a Italian approach. Oh, well, now you have me craving Lovely's pizza. <laughs> it is delicious. Not cheap, though. Oh, uh, let's no. talk about if you're broke. Yeah, <laughs> what's your go. favorite affordable, like... Whew. 10 bucks in my pocket, maybe 20 bucks in my pocket. Yeah. Where's the affordable joint and what are you going to eat there? Oh, man. So I was like, oh, I immediately know what I'm dropping at this point. Um, so, um, OK, it's, it, you need one extra dollar. You have, if, if you have <laughs> okay. $11 in your I'll pocket. I'll dig in the couch. Yeah, I'll um, see what I can find. <laughs> there is this food cart called Bari. Mm -hmm. um, it is specializing in an Italian street food known as panzerotti, which it, they're sort of like... um bigger than a hot pocket smaller than a calzone like a little little pocket guy and um <laughs> you get it um, <laughs> but oh man i love these they're like if i'm like hungover like this this is what <laughs> this is what revives me like just like one of these like greasy like super super tasty handheld italian pizza pockets oh my um, God. And, wh and where are they oh that is on um Southeast Foster, but yeah, totally delicious hangover food for sure. You have made me so uncomfortably hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All of these sound yeah, amazing. Totally. Um, Brooke, thank you so much for walking me through. Yeah, absolutely. All of these Always restaurants. Fun. I can't wait to check some of them out. Yeah, I'm going to go get pizza, I think. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> and now for your microdose of news. The rate of overdose deaths among teenagers is growing faster here in Oregon than anywhere else in the country, according to the Lund Report. Part of the problem is that Oregon doesn't have a great mental health service system for teenagers, and a lot of them still just don't know how common and dangerous fentanyl is. But it is the legal drug that is arguably the biggest problem here in Oregon these days. OPB reports the state's alcohol-induced death rate is also above the national average. And preservationists have failed to protect a building that was once the center of Portland's Japantown. The Yamaguchi Hotel was opened in the 1920s and 30s in the neighborhood now known as Old Town. The well-regarded nonprofit Blanche House has plans to demolish the building in order to make way for a new medical center. If you want more news and local events, sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Portland, We'll throw a link in the show notes. Well, that's all for us today here on CityCast Portland. If you like the show, we'd love for you to tell a friend about us. You can also leave us a rating or a review. We'd really appreciate it. I'm John Natariani. Claudia Meza will be back on the show tomorrow morning. Until then, see you at Slim's. Slim's.